Okay, well, welcome back. <laughs> I think we had a little bit of a glitch with YouTube then for some odd reason or other. I don't know why that is. But uh, I was just saying that what I'm working on tonight, just about the next half an hour or so, then I'll be going live on Facebook, by the way, straight after. Well, within 10 minutes, I've got to switch all the stuff around as well. Um, I'm going to work around the eye of this tiger. We know a song about that. So once I've worked around the eye of this tiger, I'm working all these little details as well within the photograph, as you can see to the left-hand side of the screen there. And I'm going to show you a little bit about the fur work as well. I have to kind of work on starting to, for the first layer of details, and the kind of brushes which I tend to use. So stay tuned, I'll be back to you in a minute, and, uh, and I'll just give you this little message, just one sec, and I'll be back on board. So let me tell you a little bit about patreon.com forward slash the Devon Artist. There's currently over 80 hours of video tuition for you. There's also tips and tricks videos, full length art videos, a PDF document which will go with that video, the outline drawing, the reference photograph, but most of all let me show you all my techniques from my 40 years of painting wildlife. For the $10 level you get access to all of that catalogue of video tutorials going back for well over one and a half years. Also bear in mind that I produce a brand new video tutorial every month. You can cancel your donation whatever you want, you can downgrade it, you can upgrade it to a different tier. Now I've also got a companion page which will help you navigate Patreon and locate the information and tutorials that you want to find. I've also got a Facebook group which you gain access to when you become a member. So all you need to do is visit www.patreon.com forward slash the Devon Artist. I'll see you there. Right, well, thank you very much indeed for watching that. Okay, right, see, it didn't take long, did it? Didn't take long at all. Right, now I'm back on board. Now I'm here. So I had a bit of a glitch with uh, YouTube for some reason. It wasn't showing the video screen on my screen. So therefore, I assumed it wasn't working. So therefore, I stopped the broadcast. And thought, I better start it all over again. But lo and behold, in the background, it's still running. So anyway, I'm here. So hello. Right, as I was saying, I'm working on the tiger's eye. This is continuation from last week. So this was a to be continued. If you remember, I went live last week with this particular one. And I'm going to work on the details around the eye and look at all these fine little lines. See, I'm going to all the little fine lines around the outside of this eye. But the kind of colours I'm working with, I've just put another colour in this. I need to add that to my list, actually. And that was French Ultramarine. Now, I'm going to put that down there so we know what we're working from. There you go. So French Ultramarine is another colour I'm working with. Uh, within, that's all I've used so far on the colours. So it's not too bad, is it? So it's more or less like a limited palette, really, is the idea of what I'm working with. And I'm using a mixture of that French Ultramarine with Lamp Black. Now, I do use black. I know it's one of those things that not every artist uses. uses. It's one of those... One of those things which, you know, do you reserve the white of the paper or do you use warm white paint? Do you use black or do you make black out of red, yellow, um, you know, and, and blue? So it's entirely your choice really in how you work it. And everybody's different, aren't we? We're all kind of different in our kind of own styles and ways of painting. So there we go. Right. Anyway, now we're up and running. Now we can relax into the, uh, into the painting. I want you to say hi. So say a big hello. Give me a wave, just let me know where you're from and uh, just uh, let me know that you're here watching away while I sit here in the evening here in the UK in North Devon just relaxing and painting away. Because the thing is when I start painting with something like this I just get so involved, so relaxed and using all these different techniques. So right this minute I'm using stippling. So these are the tiny, tiny marks. So what I'll do, I'll zoom in a little bit for you in a minute so you can just see a bit more detail on the screen because at the moment I know I'm zoomed out quite some way so I'll do that for you so who have we got on there so far so I'm gonna have a quick look at the screen before I carry on um so we got uh, Lisbeth Elizabeth Lisbeth Allen good evening Lisbeth Sandra Duvier hi Paul first time seeing you live thank you Sandra hi from the Netherlands hello Sandra big wave for you <laughs> um so anybody wants to say hello please say hello okay because I want to hear from you and hear kind of where you're from and uh, you know just say hello because it's quite nice to have some company tonight so I'm gonna have a look what we got on the screen so I'm gonna zoom out a little bit closer for you now so that should be a little bit better is that better yeah okay now you can see more of what I can see 
So let's get into this detail. So I'll keep looking back at the screen every now and then for you so I can just see who's commenting and uh, obviously I need to concentrate on painting at the same time. So I quite enjoy this. It's good fun. It really is good fun. Especially when you go live as well. Because it keeps me on my toes. It really does. Was it dealing with a computer and talking to you guys and also thinking about what I'm painting? Okay. <laughs> I love every minute of it. So I'm looking at the, the longer kind of hairs which come over the top of the eye here. Now there are some hairs which come over the eye itself. But I'm going to add those in shortly. We can do that by either using a lifting off technique and that's just by if you'd never use that technique that's just by removing the watercolor and removing the paint some paints are staining some of us aren't so it depends on what paint you put down but you can with a damp clean brush it's got to be clean and it's got to be damp not soaking wet lift off a little bit of paint just so you can uh, reveal the uh, nearly the white of the paper but as I say it depends on the colors that you've used it really does that makes a world of difference. Okay, so I'm going to look at the direction of these as well. Because when you look at the photograph in the top left hand corner, you can see the the eyebrow, if you can call it eyebrow, the eyebrow goes in that general direction. Now I very often tell my uh, patrons on patreon.com forward slash 11 artists, and you know you've got the link down there, you know where I am. I tell them about all the directional brush strokes and the way I tend to work and the way I tend to look at um, any painting that I work on it's all about it's all about analyzing it first I tend to sit down before I start a painting and then look at the details I've got to work with look at the colors I've got to work with do a lot of pre-planning first you can do some test pieces as well so for example I've got this here look there you go that's a bit of a mess in it there's another one there on the other side look not for this project obviously with the colors but I've also got this is for this painting as I said earlier on so I'd like to test the colours out, match them up to the photograph um, to see if they're about right before I finally start on the painting itself. So that's what you want to be doing really. In my eyes, that's the way I prefer to work anyway. The thing is as well, if you practice with the colours first of all, kind of test them out before you go straight to the painting. At least that way, you know, there's less chance of you making a little mistake here and there. Um, or as Bob Ross used to call them, happy accidents, which I quite like that terminology, it's quite good. So because of that, you know, you, you, there's less chance they're making mistakes. And because there's less chance of making mistakes, there's less need for correcting uh, kind of little errors, little little issues that you may have. Now I'm going to work down towards this lower eyelid. And I'm going to use a stippling technique. And that's just by tapping all the time. Tiny, tiny taps. That's all I'm doing. Tiny, tiny taps. And just a few more down there. Now, what I tend to do as well um, is that when my brush is about to run out of paint, I tend to go higher up where I don't need quite as much detail. Well, I say we need the detail, but we don't need it quite as strong. And when your brush is literally just about to need reloading, try and make use of that brush. Try and make use of the ink or the, ink, the paint. That's like, it's been a long day. The paint that's on it, and you see what I mean. And then you can start to think about these little curves, these little areas. And this is a bit like a, a bit like a rope shaper, really. You know, when you got the bands going around, and that's where you're looking. So we've got to kind of keep in your mind when you're doing this. Now I can see, so can the tiger. But I can see, just down here, there's a little bit of brown. I can just see a hint of brown in there. So a little bit of that uh, kind of raw sienna and burnt sienna sort of mix. Um, I may pop that in shortly, just so we can look at that. But it's a matter of looking deep into that photo, it really is. And the deeper you look, the bigger the photo, obviously, it's got a very large detailed photo, as this one is, which I'm using. The bigger the photo, the more detail you can see, and the more detail you can paint. Okay, because you can obviously zoom in to that photograph if you're working with a tablet or an iPad. I've got a, a tablet in front of me, which I tend to work on. Now working down, again, down to the lower section down here. Oh, tippy tap, there we go. Now I've got a question of the week actually, it's a question of the week, we've already put it on Facebook, but it's a question of the week, which I want to ask you guys, okay? It's a simple question and it's a straightforward one, <laughs> it's a straightforward one word answer. Are you ready for this? Okay, 
Now the question of the week for you is, are you left or right handed? As you can probably see, I'm a left handed person. So are you left or right handed? You put a reason behind it if you want to, but just one word is all I need. It'll be quite interesting to see when we all read through this uh, conversation uh, later on, after I've been on Facebook and Instagram as well, I'll be going on straight after Facebook. So it's quite a marathon tonight. Um, that we can look back at the comments that people have said and see how many people on here are left or right handed. So that would be quite a, quite an interesting one, yeah. So let's, uh, let's just answer that question for me if you can. You're lefty or you're a righty? That's what we need to know. I know in Derbyshire we used to call ourselves, when you're left handed, I think we used to call ourselves um, keggy handed. So keggy handed. Okay, it's a different word, isn't it? So that's what we used to say. Are you keggy handed? Okay, so right now, I'm just stippling as usual all the way through. Now I'm using that mix, so if I just show you my paints a little bit. So just have a quick look here. So this is uh, French Ultramarine, as I mentioned, and the Lamp Black. So that's the one I want to use down for the lower part of the eye. Now, when you look at that photograph, you can see what I mean by how, how blue, there's a hint of blue within there. We can either use French Ultramarine. We can mix the French Ultramarine with Cerulean Blue. Or we could use indigo and cerulean blue for a similar kind of effects, similar kind of colours to kind of work on this and work on all these lovely details. I can see this gradually building up as we go along just by taking your time. There's never any hurry with any painting. You should never ever rush a painting. You really shouldn't. Unless you've got to set yourself a time limit. So I've said that to people before. But if it's a general painting that you're working on and the worst time, the worst time, I'm sure you guys know this, is when you get to near the finishing stage. I know, I know I've been there many times and you just want to get it done. You're quite happy, you want to see it finished and then you rush the last bit. So you need to try and avoid that if that's you as well, because I do it as well, it's not just you, it's me. Then try and avoid that, okay? Right, okay, so I'm going to work down, because we've got the lower eyelid here, I'm trying to look at all these details now within this bottom eye. I'm going to check the internet in a minute, okay, see what people have said. I'm going to read back through some of the comments. So you can have your name shout out while I'm live. <laughs> so if you want me to mention your name live on the on the air, on YouTube, then please say so and I'll be here for you and I'll, uh, I'll read your question or your comment out. Let's have a quick look down there. Now this is quite white in this. I'm going to be adding some watercolour white in there shortly. But that's going to give that kind of real little bit of sparkle in there because it really is it's obviously a bit of a wet area just like a bit of a bump there i can just make it out and also the little sections down there as well now i mentioned about that brown didn't i so i'm going to go for a little bit of that um i did say raw sienna which is this one here so we've got raw sienna and burnt sienna together in that one now i don't want it overloaded so i'm just taking a little bit off on some tissue first and just add this in. I might just stipple it in actually, I don't want to put too much in one go. Add this into there, just a little bit. It's a bit of a reflection as well, I think, from the eye because obviously the eyelid itself is wet. So therefore, because it's wet, you're gonna get a tiny bit of reflection going on there at the same time. Right, so I'm gonna to switch to a size, let's have a quick look. Let's go for a size five brush, okay. If you want to know what brushes I use, please ask, I don't mind. I'm completely transparent, I really don't mind. I'm here to answer your questions, you got me for, well, it was half an hour. Now you got me for about another 10, 15 minutes, well 10, oh hang on, what we got? <gasps> 11 minutes left, oh no, then I've got to go on Facebook Live. Okay, right, so I'm going to soften that down a little bit more, just knock it back a little bit, but meanwhile, back at the jungle, I'm gonna go back to Facebook and have a quick look at the comments, what we've got there, and say hello to everybody. So, here we go, right, okay, so we've got Ross, Ro oh, sorry, Rose Rose, I'm in anyway, from Cairo, oh, Cairo, hello there. Darren, hello Darren, fancy you being here tonight. <laughs> um, okay, Rose Rose, Egypt, hello in Egypt. Jim Smithers, hi Paul, from Orlando, Florida. It's 138, my name is Amy, not Jim, husband's name, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Amy. Thank you very much. 
Uh, Sandra Duvier, I have a question. How do you decide which colour you start with? For instance, when you're underpainting. Well, it depends on the photo, Sandra, because when you look at this photo at the top left there, now I'm looking deep into that eye. That's what I mean by the large photograph, because you can really pinch in. So you're going to pinch into that photograph on a tablet or an iPad or on a laptop or even on a mobile phone as well. Sorry, cell phone and make it. I do apologize. Okay, so you can do either or either or whatever. So as long as you can get a large photo and pinch into that, you can then really pick out those fine colors and really kind of work out the colors. Think about the days, you know, when we used to, when we were kids, we used to look at the television, see all the little dots of colors on the television. Think about that in a similar way, sort of, is that you can pinch in, you can see those colors from those dots. You can really see everything that you need. And that's why I tend to look at a photograph before I start painting it. I'll pinch into the photograph on the tablet and look deep into those colours. So then I'll look for the lightest colour and start with that one. Okay, so there you go, Sandra. Thank you very much. Uh, Sue Norris, hi from Montreal. Oh, well, hello, Sue. In the USA, hello. Yeah, 1048 over there. Thank you very much indeed. Um, okay, Rose Rose, which brush or what brush do you use? And it's number seven. The laptop's quite far away and I've got the wrong glasses on. Um, the brush rose, rose rose I use is a Winsor Newton, which is this particular one as you can see here, and it's a series 111, and it's the size double zero, which is out there, okay. And I use this a lot. I've just got myself, oh, I'm going to show you this. Thank you to Paul B. So thank you, Paul, for letting me know about these. And Jackson's got an offer on, and guess what I've just bought? Quite a lot of double zero brushes. There you go. Yes, <clears throat> they arrived today. So it's nice when you get a nice little parcel in the, in the, uh, in the um, kind of post, so it's really nice. Okay, so Sandra, right, oh yeah, right-handed. Darren, you're both, you're ambidextrous, well done. Jim, well, not Jim. <laughs> Sorry, that's uh, Amy, isn't it? Sorry, I do apologize. So um, yeah, Amy, Jim. Um, so you are, I've lost where you were now. Oh yeah, lefty. Uh, Elizabeth Allen, both. Serge, hello Serge, looks so real. <laughs> That's okay, not a problem. Uh, Elizabeth, phew, glad I'm not the only one to rush towards a finish. Yeah, you see, it's true though, isn't it? And Sandra, thank you for the answer. You're more than welcome, Sandra. Right, back to it, here we go. Right, you ready? Yes, I am as well. I wanna get, I wanna get cracking on this, I really do. So I'm gonna gradually build this up now. And I also want to look at where, where they will put this brown there. We've got another kind of gradual area of shape just here. And I'm doing this by stippling. Okay, so I'm constantly stippling. See the brush coming up and down. And just looking at this very carefully, very, very carefully. I'm trying to think about the time. I want to show you something else as well. I don't know if you guys know as well, I've just released a brand new free not paid for or anything like that video on how to paint a bird and the bird is a bee eater now the bee eater is extremely colorful and it's free of charge uh, part one is here on youtube if you have a look in the description below when you finish the video of course when i've gone have a look in there and i put the description in there as well and in the comments by the way which is a link to part one here on youtube now parts two and three and part one as well obviously, will be free of charge on my Patreon website as well. But uh, don't worry about that. There's no signing up or anything like that. You don't have to partake with any email addresses or anything. I'm a very honest individual. I'm sure my patrons on there, my members on Patreon will let you know that for sure. Okay, very honest and very straightforward. Um, so I'm going to show you in a minute, just a, just a 36 second clips, two clips I'll put together for you on how to paint a bee eater and it's a if you don't know the bee eater bird it's such a colorful bird it's a beautiful bird it really is and i chose to paint that because um i was given or sent some watercolors from america i did do a little video on that as well for unboxing them from regina's watercolor.com and she's very very kindly sent them through for me to have a play with uh, so I've, because of that i did a little video as i said on a bee eater on how to use those paints so I'm going to switch to that, so just bear with me for 36 seconds, I'll be back with you in a minute. Right, just a little bit more. And let's get some more water on that, so let's dry that a little bit. And then straight into the cold black now. 
but that's got a little bit of that yellow mixture in there not on purpose it just transferred across it jumped it did honestly what do you mean you don't believe me now i'm going to add this watercolor white just to the front to begin with we can't see it on the background i know but i'm not going to go mad on it because i said earlier on less is best remember that Right, well there you go. Okay, so that's on the Patreon channel as you can see. So I hope you like that. That's quite a nice one for you guys to work with if you fancy having a go at something like that. And um, I say it's a, it's a cracking one to do actually. It's so colourful, it really is. And it really kind of tests you out with the, the very bright and vivid colours for you to play with. Now, so I did say, so we've only got five minutes left. I'll show you a little bit about the fur because I'm not going to get this part finished today. Just there. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get some watercolour white first of all. Now I use watercolour white. I did say this last week. Um, again, I tend not to reserve the white to the paper. That's the way I paint because I'm because I'm a fine artist. Uh, I find reserving every single fine hair highlight will take forever. So I tend to use watercolour white as you can see here. You can use white gouache by the way. If you're fancy using that, that's not a problem at all. Um, and that's the same kind of thing. It's an opaque white um, opaque medium watercolor if you wish which it is so you can use um, white gouache but you've got to use it as i said in a creamy consistency otherwise it just will just kind of fade away and you get nothing of the highlights which i'm trying to get here it's a little bit more just down there or oh, barely touching the paper two airs in air that's all i'm using it's a few more around there and this will give that extra kind of sparkle, that kind of shape which we need. And it's got a very fine line. Again, barely touching two hairs in air all the way around. This, just the top of the lower eyelid, if you know what I mean, just there. I'm going to get some more paint. You can't have this too thick because it just will not move, you know, it just won't spread watercolor white. So you have to have it so you can paint a, a straight line or a line without it breaking kind of in one go. And that's the kind of aim that you need really for something like that. And as you can see, that's really kind of adding that in there now. Just a little bit. Okay, I'll get some more in there later on where I need it. But for now, that'll do. So that's a little bit of watercolour white. And the beauty about watercolour white as well, you can just soften one edge just to blend it down. So you can just have a sharp, bright white area and a softened area at the top. And I'm going to just do that a little bit more around there. Just really getting fine work now. And there's a thin line just there as well. So I'm going to drag a little bit along. Okay. Now then, I'll show you a little bit about fur. Now, with fur, I've got fur, probably two and a half minutes left before I need to switch off and then set up for Facebook. Um, with fur itself, what you've got to think about is working in layers again. So you would have to start off with the lightest layer first of all and then gradually get darker as you go along. So when you're looking at the, at the color chart, here was my pointing stick, you're looking at raw sienna as a first layer. Then you're looking at the mixture of this one here, which is burnt sienna, cadmium orange, and burnt umber, okay? Then you can go even darker with burnt umber, and you can add burnt umber, burnt sienna, and a little bit of lamp black in there as well, or if you wish, French ultramarine instead of lamp black. Um, and then that would be another darker layer. So basically the idea of watercolors, as you all know, is that you start off light and you work your way a little bit darker as you go along. So you can either use this, where shall I start? I'll start this side actually, just to give us some ideas. So you've got to look at the brush direction. You can barely see that, I know. You have to look at the brush direction and the feather direction. It's not a feather, is it, Paul? You've got to look at the brush direction. Got to, it's been a long day, I told you. And the fur direction, Paul, Okay, no comments, please, thank you. And I tend to akin that to a clock face, all right? And what I mean by that is that when you look at the direction that these lines go in, this is going towards about one o'clock. Then it switches as it comes down here towards about two o'clock, then three o'clock, and so on and so on and so on. And because I say these kind of things in my own kind of head while I'm painting, it keeps me on track. The other tip as well, which I tell people when my members on Patreon is, is look at the direction in, in the first place. So look at the photograph and you can see some of the hairs going in certain directions. So make reference marks 
And by doing so, when you get carried away with a fern like this, it's very easy to get carried away with it. You find that those reference marks, unless you've got those there, you end up painting the wrong direction. So just put a few reference marks around the fur itself before you make a start. Now, one last quick tip before I disappear is that I use what's called, huh, this is called my replicator brush, the replicator. Look at the state of that. I know, I know, no, no comments, please. Okay, you can if you want, I don't mind. And the idea is this little brush of mine, which is an old one I was about to throw in the bin, which I was, um, just, you know, I thought, well, I'll make use of that. So I got a pair of pliers, like this here, and I squished or squashed or squished the end, the end of that on the ferrule, the metal ferrule, just like I'm going to hold it, I've got the wrong hand. The metal ferrule there, give it a good old squeeze, flattened it out. As I said, don't do that to a decent brush, okay? Make sure it's one that is literally going to go in the bin. Because if it doesn't work, you don't mind throwing it in the bin then, do you? But by doing so, you can see for the first one or two layers for the tiger or for any fur which you paint, or feathers, <laughs> go back to that, then this is handy for those first couple of layers. You do find that the lines are far too symmetrical, which I'll just show you on that. I've got a little bit of paper there. Because they're two in line, two parallel, like so, even when you cross them, they're too much the same. It's okay for the first one, two layers, but for the top layer, then I just use my double zero brush. Okay, so we're about there now. We've been on for um, quite some time. Let's have a quick look. 7.01. So I'm going to have to say goodbye. I know, I know. Now, remember, I'm going to be going to Facebook very shortly. Once I set all, all the live gear up for Facebook, I'm going to give you the social media links now. So just bear with me a minute. And if I just put them there for you, okay? Make a note of that. That's going to be on the screen for literally 30 seconds or so. You can always pause the video, don't forget. So that's not a problem at all. And have a look at them. Switch over to Facebook, as I said. And once I've been on Facebook, then I'm just going to get rid of that bit of blue paint there. Look. There you go, it's gone. Once I've been on Facebook, then I'll be going live on Instagram. Now, Instagram stories only last for 24 hours, so it will not be saved on there. However, this one will be saved on YouTube, and it will be saved on Facebook. Okay, got the idea? Where well, it's going to go? Three, two, one. Come on. Okay. So there you go. Last minute, a uh, quick look on the comments again. So we got... Um, okay, so a quick look. <laughs> okay, thank you for the answer. Got that one. Me Make me laugh. Thank you, Sandra. Uh, me, you. Thank you. I know. I'm a right-handed. Lots of laughs. Well, thank you everybody again for watching me here on uh, on YouTube. I'll try and go live again this I kind of same kind of time next week, so look out for me, okay? I'll try not to announce it in case I'm a bit late, because it depends on, on things we're doing here at home as well. And I'm going to say goodbye for now, and I'm going to catch you hopefully, very shortly, in the next 10 minutes or so, on Facebook. So until then, I'm going to say goodbye. Bye. Hi, once again, welcome to one of my watercolor tutorials. Now, this time, what we're working on it's a great spotted woodpecker chick, which is this one here. We'll be working on the eye and also the detail that we can see within there. And also we're working on the detail within the feathers, trying to create that shape and the form, thinking about the directional brush strokes in order to create more of a realistic feel to the woodpecker. Once we've got the feathers on, then we're gonna start thinking about the wood. Now the beauty about painting the wood on something like this as well, is that all this texture within the wood, you can change that. That's entirely your choice. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. So if you wanna just paint just parts of this and not all of this, you can do. If you want to change the texture or the colour, you can do. It's your painting at the end of the day. And not forgetting we'll also be working on the moss. So I want to show you how to create the detail there. And I'm going to use a little bit of a different technique in order to create that kind of mossy look. But also we'll create like a vinaigrette feel around the outside of the painting as we go along. I'll show you exactly how I do that. And don't forget you'll also get the outline drawing, the reference photo, and even the PDF document typed out by me with all my photographs as well on how to paint this great spotted woodpecker chick. So let's get started and let's get the brushes wet. 